Hello everybody, Andy here, and today we are going to be looking at the new universal equipment for Kill Team. Um, so obviously we've just had uh, the, the exhibition match, so we've managed to figure out a lot of this for ourselves, but, you know, it is good to, uh, to have a think about what GW tells us, because sure enough, in the exhibition match, we didn't actually get to see everything, um, and quite a bit of it was, although explained explicitly by the two players, uh, not everything got explained because not everything was used in the exhibition match. So I'm going to read it to you, and we are also, don't worry, going to watch the video for it. So, let's do it. As part of the electrifying reveals for the new edition of Kill Team, we showed some fancy plastic equipment pieces that represent all kinds of gear your optives can take into their missions. They certainly look lovely, and they're a lot more appealing than the old cardboard tokens. But what exactly do they do? Can I really drop some barbed wire and mines in front of my hapless friends? We then get this lovely looking little picture. We see what we assume are the heavy barricades there and there. We see the regular barricades, we see a ladder, we see some barbed wire, we see mines, we see ammo crates, um, and we see two uh, smoke grenades. Lovely. Oh, and I think these back here, if you see them, are... Uh, something. Uh, and here we see, uh, this should be noted that this barbed wire has a hand grasping it, much like I am grasping for shapes to still be in Kill Team, um, grasp against draws indeed, uh, it, I suspect that's where my hand would end up if I did in fact do that. Right, let's keep on going. I don't think there's anything else in that picture that we haven't seen, although, uh, minor note, if you're keeping an eye, if you're, if you're the type of chap that likes to pay attention to the Warcom, uh, no, not Warcom, this is Warcom, Warhammer YouTube, uh, where they're doing, like, daily? Couple of, couple of times a week? Uh, painting guides well that one there that smoke grenade that is i'm gonna say red i don't know um they showed us that on uh on warhammer youtube i didn't watch it because i don't like hobby right moving on first everyone's favorite portable day room ruiners grenades if you've ever loaded up your favorite operative with crack grenades and then watched him get shot to bits by a sniper before he pulled the pin, you'll know the heartbreak of those wasted equipment points. With these tokens, the new edition ensures you'll never lose out on some vital equipment again. Instead of spending equipment points to outfit individual miniatures, you'll now select up to four pieces of equipment for your entire team from a universal set, that's the ones above, plus additional options unique to your kill team. Anyone can be the lucky lad who gets to use it, and in the case of grenades, you get two uses. You get two choices in the universal equipment list, explosive grenades and utility grenades. The former are pretty self-explanatory, and you can choose two frag grenades for soft things, two crack grenades for hard things, or one of each. So that itself is a huge change, which, if you stop and think about it, kind of makes sense. You might be thinking, oh, grenades, they used to be one thing, right? You get the crack, uh, which is three EP, or you get the frag, which is two EP. But now, because everything is slots, well, it kind of doesn't matter. And in a sense, it's pretty fair to say that actually, however they're balanced, they should be equal. They should have always probably cost the same amount of equipment points because they're for different things. Yes, a crack grenade with AP1 is always solid, but you know what? Sometimes you want to do a lot of damage or a little bit of damage to a lot of people, and that is better for the situation than a crack grenade. So with this coming out and saying, hey, you just get, you use one equipment slot and you get two grenade slots uh, and you can put whatever you want in them. This makes total sense. I like it. Very cool. I assume the utility grenades are going to be the same thing. Let's quickly have a, a watch of this uh, mission brief briefing rules of engagement kill team. Uh, as you can see there, you can clearly see what I'm watching at the moment. World of Warcraft. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Commander, thank you for joining me. If you're going to be successful on Volcus, you need to know the rules of engagement. Your kill team operations will be deadlier than ever. Secure victory by slaying enemy operatives to achieve the kill op, and claim crucial objectives to achieve the crit op. 
Your missions will now be measured in inches. It's an Imperial system that will ensure the Imperium's success. For the first time, you can hone your skills in solo missions before embarking on 1v1, co-op, and multiplayer operations. New equipment helps you to master the kill zone. Use ladders, barbed wire, smoke grenades, and your faction-specific equipment to gain an advantage over your enemies. You have all the tools at your disposal, Commander. The fate of Volkus is in your hands. The Emperor protects. God damn it. Inches. Ah, oh, it's fine. Whatever, dude. Inch it's fine. I don't care about shapes. Okay, cool. That was cool. All right, let's keep going. Uh, so we get to see what a smoke grenade is now. There's a lot of text here. Let's see how that pans out for us, shall we? Smoke grenade is 1 AP. Makes sense. Cool. Place one of your smoke grenade markers within six inches of this operative. It must be visible to this operative or on vantage terrain of a terrain feature or on vantage terrain of a terrain feature that's visible to this operative. Okay. The Oh, okay. So it's saying that you can, th even though technically because your operative is there, and the vantage point is there, if it's within six, you can still get it on top, even though you technically can't see it. Sure. Great. The marker creates an area of smoke one inch horizontally and unlimited height vertically, but not below. One inch. Okay. That's, uh, that's, mm, that's not two inch. I know that much. While an operative is wholly within an area of smoke, it's obscured to optics. So you have to be wholly within. So, Okay, you have to be wholly within a one inch area. Fine, uh, it's obscured to operatives more than two inches from it. That means um, if you're within two, uh, you still are able to shoot through it as if it's just a kind of cover. It's not granting obscurity when you're within two and vice versa. In addition, whenever an operative is shooting an enemy operative wholly within an area of smoke, ignore the piercing weapon rule unless they are within two inches of each other. So uh, for those of you that didn't catch up on this, piercing is the new AP, AP armor, armor piercing. So, okay, I, I've been going over it a little bit in my head and piercing one would mean the old AP one, which is fine. Why say armor piercing when it can just be piercing? I'm down with it. Maybe you're not piercing armor. Maybe you're piercing other things, right? However, changing AP1, armor piercing one to piercing one, making that P1, but P1 in the old system, the current system, was armor piercing on a crit. So that's going to take a little bit of getting used to for all of us kill te existing kill teamers. When we say P1 now, we just mean AP1. So there you go. I might have been overthinking it. Yes, you noticed that, did you? In the ready step of the next strategy phase, roll 1D3. Remove that smoke grenade marker after a number of activations equal to that D3 have been completed or at the end of the, of the turning point, whichever comes first. So um, we, we, we already saw this. We already saw, saw it get played out in the exhibition match. Love it. I'm not going to go over it again because I went over this when I covered the exhibition match rules. I think it's really good. I think it's a lovely change. Um, it always felt a bit weird to throw the smoke grenade and then immediately get wrecked. Uh, because, you know, it's a game. I understand that. You've got to extrapolate. But I really like this. Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, very good, old chap. Uh, an operative cannot perform this action while within control range of an enemy operative. Or if you have reached the total number of times your kill team can perform it. Huh? Okay, um, I, d I don't understand that. Presumably, it's just referring in a very odd way to the fact that you take one or two of them and it's not actually giving you a grenade, it's giving you a use of one grenade. Maybe you can only use one a turn? I don't know. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, hey, uh, before we go any further, I would like to say, by the way, I'd like to give you a little, a th a little thank you, maybe. Uh, and that thank you would be... And if you're a subscriber to my channel, I'd like to give you a big double hello. Wow, so wholesome. Very wholesome at 10 minutes into the video. Because if you're still here, that means you truly deserve it. So thank you very much for that. Let's keep on going and read out about stun grenades. Utility grenades cover smoke and stun grenades for the cunning commander. A cunning linguist, maybe. Uh, giving you the option to debilitate your foes before you blow them up. 
Smoke grenades are great for obscuring an open gap you absolutely must cross, while stun grenades can rip the APL away from a cluster of foes on a roll of 3 plus and leave them stumbling. Stun grenade, 1 AP. Select one enemy operative visible to and within six inches of this operative. So you select one dude, okay. That operative and each other operative within one inch of it takes a stun test, okay. So it's basically a grenade with blast one inch. For an operative to take a stun test, roll 1d6. If the result is three plus, subtract one from its APL stat until the end of its next activation. Okay, fine. An operative cannot perform this action while within control range of an enemy operative or if you have reached the total number of times your till kill team can perform it. Here's the thing. Kill team pitches itself as being a very um, competitive game, right? This feels weird. Why make us roll? We've had to use an equipment point. We've had to get to within range. We've had to do things to make this work, this happen. Why do I then have to roll a dice to see if it happens? I understand it's a game of dice, but if I've already made decisions, which were my decision to make and wholly within my control to perform some tactics, a strategy, whatever, and there are already limitations upon that decision that I've made, like, hey, you can only possibly take two of these mags. So like, there's already limitations built into the fact that I want to run a stun grenade. Why do I then have to be just, oh, by the way, you might do nothing a third of the time. It's like, oh, why? I, uh, it's fine, whatever, nobody cares. Who gives a shit? Great, good decisions, I love it. Cool. <clears throat> Very consistent themes. Barricades get spruced up with two new options to go alongside the classic waist-high walls. Heavy barricades are solid structures that can hide optives entirely and give them the best cover around, while portable barricades can be picked up and carried around to ensure your daredevil objective grabbers don't have to charge out into the killing fields without support. You can grab one of either as one of your equipment selections or two of the regular light barricades, with all of your operatives starting the mission with conceal orders now, ensuring that everyone is nestled behind cover is more important than ever to escape a first term barrage. Okay, sure, sure. I, we could just ignore the second half of that paragraph. That meant nothing. I think they were just, they had to hit the 500 word count limit. Um, but yeah, cool, makes sense. Uh, we Heavy barricades, light barricades, uh, portable barricades. We I think we've already kind of figured out what these all do. Let's read the light barricades. So you get two for one equipment slot, whereas presumably the others you only get one. But maybe you do get two. I don't know. Maybe there will be um, a difference in instead of the number of barricades you get. Instead, it will be in how you're allowed to deploy it. Let's have a look. Light barricades are light terrain. Before the battle, you can set up any of them wholly within your territory, on the kill zone floor and more than two inches from other equipment terrain features. Oh, other barricades. Because you can take equipment and terrain features are separate, but equipment terrain features, cool, all right. So I can't just stack two barricades in a row. Cool, yep, yeah, makes sense. If you need your marksman to climb a vantage point but don't want to waste their precious first turn on dashing to the nearest wall, ladders are the gift that keep on giving. Place one next to a raised platform and your operatives only spend a single inch of movement to reach the next floor, letting them zip up into position with the whole APL free to get busy with the long arms. Is, is long arms a, th a thing? I don't know what that means. I can guess, but I've never heard the phrase long arms before. Okay, all right. So, ladders, wow. So, I can I climb four inches for one inch? That's massive, if so. Uh, we don't see if it's gonna say, oh, but it has to be within dash, within three inches of your kill zone, uh, or of your, of your drop zone, or maybe it can just be in anywhere your territory. Maybe the whole board, that'd be silly. I don't know, maybe, but who knows? Okay, interesting interesting um but that's really good so ladders are going to completely change again how you play the game uh like one of the big issues that we've always had for example with hearthkin salvages is or uh, necrons or like your little your little slow robot boys 
is how do you get places? Um, they had to make uh, just equipment. That was how you got places. You had to use your equipment points with your hearthkin to be able to climb effectively. And in general, people just didn't climb effectively. There you go. That, that was how they dealt with that. Now, it's just a one inch tax to your move. That's pretty solid. I'm going to be honest. Kind of seems like ladders are the way to go. Do you get one ladder? Do you get two? Who knows? There are two come in the set, but mm, cool. Interesting. Interesting. I like it. I like ladders. Might have to make some of those or just buy the set. <laughs> I do like spending money. It's true. Of course, if you'd rather prevent people from moving around, opt for the tried and tested simplicity of razor wire. 38 millennia of wartime ingenuity still haven't overcome how annoying it is to climb over spools of sharp spikes and your opponent's optives will need to spend double the movement getting over it. Okay, cool. So does that mean it's going to cut? So a traverse, oh, I think they said, okay, so traverse doesn't exist anymore. However, from what we've managed to figure out, that's because it never needed to exist. And so instead, a climb of a, of a one inch barrier is always just two, right? Uh, because uh, the first amount of movement in a climb is never less than two inches, even though we're no longer using circles anymore. That's still the case from what we can tell with the exhibition match. So there is no traverse. You simply climb. That's going to be two inches. And then you cross over it, which is going to be what? An inch? two inches. Depend it depends on your base size. So does that mean you're almost creating a wall that, so it's, it's what, two inches to climb? So that's four inches to climb. And then you've got two inches left on your move, assuming you're six inches. So you're, you're taking people down to a two inch move if they want to go across that. That's really big. I like that. Or do I, or is that horrifying? Can I, can I take two of those? Can I take two light barricades, a, I'm sure there's some tech in there. If you want to get real weird with player place terrain about just absolutely cock blocking the enemy uh, and not let them move past like the, the center line or something, that'd be quite fun. I mean, it wouldn't to clarify, uh, but it'd be fun that you could hypothetically do it. There's still more to dig through in this awesome little kit, comms, dev uh, comms devices mines and ammo stashes among them and it'll all be arriving alongside the new rules later this year again very ominous we believe it's october it's what they said in a live stream but whatever make sure to check out the rest of our coverage from kill team hivestorm here at warhammer community sign up or don't sign up to their newsletter in fact you are signed up to their newsletter that's not kid we know we know you are i am i'm signed up to their newsletter twice it's really annoying i should unsubscribe but I don't. Anyway, guys, that's all. Um, I already said my thoughts as we went through it, so I have nothing else to say. Thank you for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, I'd like to give you a big... It didn't go. It's broken. Triple hello. That was weird. Okay. Oh, uh, thank you. Hey. That's f from me to you. If you made it to the end of the video, that's really cool. Nice. Thanks. Uh, cool. Daily Slop, love it, love it. Adding nothing to the discourse, uh, apart from reading a Warhammer Community article to you. Absolutely top tier, amazing.